I want to read you all a note that I sent to my friends yesterday. Today, my daughter told me that one of her friends who she kept asking to come over our house finally told her that the reason that she cannot come is because her mom hates me because I'm black. My daughter is mixed with blonde hair. So the racist bigot hates me because I'm black. My daughter has never gotten any of her friends to come over this house because where I live is extremely racist. I have experienced so much racism here. It's ridiculous. This was the first time my eight year old daughter experienced it. Yet people want to say that racism doesn't exist. Shaking my head. Please pray for my little girl because this hurt her and me. I forgive them though. And I want, I want to tell you all that God cares about racism. I have to address this before I get into this powerful vision that I had. God cares about racism. I have had dreams about racism. I will put them in the description box. And God showed me how I was treated racist throughout my life. I can still remember the first time I was called a monkey. That was the first time. And I was only 15 years old. And these these people that were treating me racist, and I'm not even going to say what nationality they were. And they was, would stand over my cubicle. I had a, a intern, a high school intern job. And they would make fun of me. They was adults. I was just a 15 year old child. I had never experienced racism in my life. And here these adults are calling me a monkey and they was making fun of me and saying, Oh, look at the monkey type and, and look how to look how the monkey moves. Oh, the monkey is moving her chair and things like that. And I didn't understand it. It, it hurt me so bad. But as a 15 year old child, I didn't even understand that they was treating me racist. I kept thinking, why are they calling me a monkey? And it hurt me. I cried and they would not go to lunch with me. They completely shunned me. It was other kids there for, for this intern program. It was a whole group of them. And they completely ignored me uh, and, and uh, ignored all of us. They treated us all the same way. And I remember feeling so alone because I was the only one that was on my floor. This is when I worked for Emigo Oil Company. I did an intern with them when I was in high school. And so this is a really big building. It's one of the largest buildings in Chicago. And so my the other people who started with me, the other kids, I don't know what floors they was on. So it was just a massive building. So I was really alone. I would go to lunch alone. And I remember those that first moment of racism. I started thinking, why are they calling me a monkey? Do I look like a monkey? Do I act like a monkey? I started internalizing it. Like, what did I do? Like, why is this happening? And I was so hurt and I felt so much shame. I didn't even tell my parents to this day. I've never discussed this with them. And I was just so ashamed. Like, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? And I didn't understand it, that they was treating me racist. And I'm saying this because that changed me. And even as I say this, I'm trying not to cry because I still feel that pain. And it it opened me up to evil for the first time, the evil of racism and what that did to me as a child. I cannot even really verbalize what that did to me as a child. But it changed me. And I became a different person. <laughs> You know, I, I began to, it hurt, it hurt me real bad. And I began to say, you know, what can I do? I don't want to be called a monkey. You know, is it the way I'm dressing? It's, what is it about me that's making them call me a monkey? Fast forward, I was 17 years old. And I remember I was working at, at Checkers, which was a, um, just a fast food burger restaurant. And I would walk from work to the mall because the mall was only four blocks. I would walk there on my lunch break or either after work and I would just go to the mall. I love to go to the mall. You know, you're a kid. You like to go to the mall. 
And I'm just mad at my business. I'll never forget. I was in a really great mood listening to my music, just having a good time. And all of a sudden, this group of people, and I'm not going to say racist. This group of people were in a car and they drove next to me and slowed down and they began to call me a nigger and all kinds of curse words and everything it was horrible i i mean they the things that came out of their mouth was so hateful and evil and i'm sitting here like it hurt me so bad i started shaking and i literally ran into a a store i remember that i ran in there for cover and i remember being afraid like are they gonna come in here and attack me like what's going on and all i was doing was walking down the street you know, and I remember after that, it was shortly after that I, in, in high school for the first time. We had a teacher for the first time. Now, now I'm 17 years old and I, I was a senior, too. So all throughout school, they never taught me about racism. My parents never taught me about racism. No one ever taught me about racism. So I experienced racism firsthand when it was done to me. And it was shocking. It, I, I can't even really verbalize what that does to a child. And then for the first time in high school, they began to teach about Emmett Till and civil rights movements and uh, things of this nature. And I began to learn about racism for the first time. But it hurt. And I didn't want to be hurt like that again. So I remember trying to think, you know, what can I do? Uh, how can I not? go through this but it was just the beginning you know fast forward i'm in college i'm in college working just as hard as everybody else and i had so many races things happen to me in college i can't even tell you all of them but i had you know people come up to me would come up to me and say yeah we know how you got here you got all kind of scholarships for being black and I'm sitting up here like, what on earth? I never had one scholarship for being black. All of my scholarships were academic, just like everybody else. And I had very little scholarships, but they were all academic. And, and when the, this, this person who attacked me, attacked me in front of everybody. I was sitting with my friends laughing, having a good time. But this racist bigot found the need to come over and embarrass me in front of everybody and start attacking me because he was racist. And then after the, the end of the conversation, he had more scholarships than me. But do you think he apologized or anything like that? No, I still remember to this day, he stared me down trying to find another way to attack me. And I just got up and left. Okay, and that was not the first time. Well, what was hurtful was not the racist bigot that did that to me. What was hurtful is that my friends that I was sitting with were all Caucasian. Okay, now I, I will say they race. And they did not say one word to defend me. And that this was just the beginning. This was just the beginning. And, and many of them have probably already turned off this video. And I really wish that they would let me know who they are in the comment section. I really wish they would let me know who they are. But they said not one word to defend me, not one word, not one word, never mentioned it to me, didn't defend me, didn't say nothing. And they were supposed to be my friends. And that hurt me real bad because I remember looking to them to help me to defend me. They said nothing. Anyway, that was just one of one of the first times I have had teachers do the same exact thing. Teachers, I'm not going to say the racists, do the same thing and and be in the middle of teaching to, to, to look to me because I was I went to a school where I was a minority. It was only four African-Americans in my whole uh, department of chemical engineering trying to get a degree. It was only four of us. And I and that was just a pattern that would repeat with my children. You know, but I'm not going to go into that right now. But my daughter is a minority where she goes to school. 
and my oldest daughter was a minority at a school she went to but I'm not going to get into that right now I'm just talking about me but I I can talk about that too I can go into all the racist things that have happened to my kids and how my oldest daughter used to get beat up every day because she was black and they found the need to bust her eye my daughter was five years old with a black eye a black ring around her eye and getting beat up every day because at five years old she needed to die because she was black in the in the minds of these racist people but i'm not i'm not even going to go into all of that because right now i'm just talking about me and all the times i was in college and embarrassed i'm working just as hard as every other race that's in school with me we are working i had no connections zero connections Zero. Nobody helped me with my schoolwork. Nobody gave me books. Nobody helped me with anything. And I saw other races had tons of help. They would help each other. I was even in a sorority in college, but I was the only chemical engineer going to school for chemical engineering in my sorority. So they that's what they told me. That was the excuse. Well, Shauna, we can't help you at all because this and maybe that excuse is valid. You know, it made sense to me at the time. So, yeah, I was the only one. But then I found out that there was other chemical engineers that was there before me and they did have a way to help me like they was all getting help but they just didn't they just didn't and I'm not even gonna go into that and I would get that a lot I would be sitting and minding my my business having fun I remember another time there was a, a get-together at uh, when I stayed in a dorm, when I worked for an, another company, Argonne National Laboratory, when I worked there. And I'm, it was a lot of people in our dorm and we was really just laughing and eating and having a good time, enjoying ourselves. And that this racist woman, you know, this bigot, she felt the need. Well, Shauna's laughing too much and she's black. I must ruin that. So she proceeded to come up to me and why do black people this and why do black people that and why do black people that because she was a racist idiot. This has happened to me multiple times. I would be laughing and joking with my friends would be hanging out. And um, I remember another time that was really embarrassing. I was having a really great time. And these guys liked me. They was about to ask for my number. And I was really happy because I liked them too. You know, I like one of them, one of them. And, um, but we was just surrounded by guys and me and my friend. And, it, you know, it was back when I was in the world, of course. I wouldn't care about that now. And this racist guy proceeds to embarrass me in front of everybody. And those guys ended up not liking me. And the guy did not want my number anymore. And he proceeded to tell me, oh, where do you live? Oh, wh where are you from? And I was like, you know, I live on the north side. And he was like, I bet you didn't always live there. I bet your family didn't always live there. And blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah. And he was so racist and evil towards me. It was crazy. And it, it, this would happen over and over again. Like I would be laughing and joking, even at my job when I worked for another company, with, which is too close. Um, I'm not even going to say the name of this company. And it, but I was working for this company and uh, I was the only black person in the department. And I'm laughing and joking with my co-workers, a secretary who, you know, I'm laughing too much. So she decided to come and break that up. And she came in there and attacked me racistly again and started saying about black people this and black people that and, and embarrassing me. And the guy who I was laughing with was Indian. I will say that. And uh, she was saying how Indians can never bl marry a black person anyway. They'll never accept that. It was just crazy. We was just friends. But that totally severed our friendship after that moment. After that moment, he no longer wanted to talk to me. Because this is the type of damage that these racist people proceed to do in this world. So when I hear people tell me that racism does not exist, and I can go on and on and on. I can go into police brutality because people say they oblivious to that. Well, that's not real. You know, <laughs> that's not real. Shauna, you're just making it all up. Oh, I can go into how many times I've been stopped for no reason for the color of my skin. And because I was driving a nice car, I had a brand new car. It was a platinum edition. 
and it had every you know heated seats cooling seats it had every type of thing you can get because I was a chemical engineer at the time and I could afford it and I wanted a nice car and the police would would harass me all the time stop me for no reason and scream at me for no reason and I would even say what did I do wrong what are you doing with this car I remember them stopping me and I talked about this in another video already so I'm not going to go into it too much but they literally called the dealership to prove that I actually bought the car and they they stopped me and accused me of stealing my car and that happened right in the town that I'm in right now and I will talk about this town because this town is a racist evil wicked town and I'm not going to say that everybody in this town is the same because I do have three neighbors. Uh, well, actually, it's only two houses, but one house has two people in it. And they are very wonderful people. And I've even had dreams about them. And God has shown me that they really have a good heart and they don't treat me racist. But the majority of people in the neighborhood that I live in, they don't want nothing to do with me. They don't want to... Uh, commune with me they don't invite me to anything and I was even told by one of the, the three that uh, wonderful she even told me she said normally when somebody moves in they have a party for them they come by the house and introduce themselves but she said they didn't do none of that for you but she did she came over and introduced herself and was nice to me she said they they just totally she said I had never seen she was like I've been here for she had been living in that house for like 50 years. And she said, I've never seen, I've never seen them do that the way that they treated you. And that was also another reason why they wanted to ruin my career. Because here I was a black woman, you know, making good money. And when I moved into this neighborhood, I could care less what color these people was in this neighborhood. Because this is how racist people think. Racist people think, well, you just want to live here with us because we're white. I'm not thinking about these people. I looked at several different houses all over. And I chose the house that I liked. I wasn't thinking about racism. You, we don't, A lot of people who are non-racist, they don't get it because they're racist. They think we all think that way. No, they think that way. I just bought a house. That was it. And I've never experienced as much racism in my life, even being in Chicago, to the, the maximum amount that I, I, I received here. And I can go into the court system and it's so many things that I'm not saying. It's so many things that I'm just holding back on. So when somebody tries to comment and tell me that racism doesn't exist, you know, I, I know that they're lying. You will never convince me of that. Never. And here's my eight-year-old daughter experiencing as, as well for the first time. This is her first time. And I, I'm sad to say that it is probably the first time of many. And I'm going to be the one that's going to have to hold her. And I, I had to hold her as the tears flowed down her eyes, uh, down her cheeks. I had to hold her. I had to comfort her. And how many more times are we going to have because of all the racism in this world. God cares about racism. He showed me that prophetically. This is not something he doesn't care about. There have been opportunities where I could have talked about race. I could have talked about skin color. And I will go ahead and say it here. I have seen Jesus many, many times. I have seen Jesus back in, in his time, but, but it's another video to really explain biblically, because I can, about things that I'm not going to touch on in this video. But I will say that I have seen twice, actually. I, at first, I was thinking I saw it once, but then God reminded me of another time that Jesus would tan. And when he would tan, his skin complexion was, it was a little bit lighter than mine. So he definitely had some kind of black skin on the inside of him because he would tan dark. He showed me that twice. He showed me that twice. And I want to say this because I have to say this to my fellow 
African-American sisters and brothers. I get it. Don't think that I don't understand that I don't get it because I've had people try to um, tell me as if they talk to me as if I don't understand the racism. I have probably experienced more racism than the people who have even said that to me. Try being a chemical engineer, the only one in college, the minority. <laughs> Try being that. Try being the only black person on all your jobs. The only black engineer, that is. The only black engineer. I was always the only black engineer on all my jobs, except for when I worked for L'Oreal. When I worked for L'Oreal, there were other um, black people because it was a black <laughs> hair. We, we studied mostly black hair. So of course they had black and more black engineers and chemists there. But try walking in my shoes as an engineer and tell me that I don't get it and that I don't understand. I understand and I know that a lot of people are upset because of all this racism. And what's worse is you have these black people raising up this one lady I can't even remember her name right now. She works under the Trump administration. I cannot stand this woman. Every time I see her, I just think of a bobblehead, a bob, you know, those heads, those bobblehead dolls. I'm not sure I'm saying it right. That just goes because <laughs> and she goes throughout the world and, and tries to proclaim that there's no such thing as racism and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, this lady is horrible, horrible. And I've heard that from other people. There, There is no racism. There's no racism. Look, I don't know what experiences they've had, but there definitely is racism. And God has given me prophetic dreams where he's shown me that there is racism. He showed me a map of the world and showed me the racism throughout the world. He showed me that. These things are not oblivious to God. And I want to get into the word of God. John seven twenty four, Judge not according to the appearance but judge righteous judgment. Romans 10, 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. 1 John 2, 9, he that saith he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. James 2, 9, but if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Romans 2.11, for there is no respect of persons with God. Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. John 13.34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Revelation 7.9, after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. 1 Samuel 16, 7 But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height. So, there's all kind of races in heaven and God condemns racism. He condemns looking at people and judging them. These people in this community that I'm in, they are disgusting. They have banded that they don't want to talk to me. They don't want nothing to do with me. They don't want me in their little neighborhood. This is how they treat me because I'm black. And now they treated my daughter, my children, the same way my other daughter I did another video where I discussed this as well when I discussed the racism in another video because they was hating on her to the point. They, they, let me tell you what these people have done to me. Okay, when you say racism is just words, it's just words. It's just words. So what if the police pull you over and treat you racist and they don't even just pull me over? Let me correct that. My brother, I mean, let me finish that. My brother came to visit me, man, in his business. They, he had a nice car as well. They pulled him over, and I don't have that nice car I used to have, by the way. But I have the same make of car, but I don't have the heated seats, the cooling seats, and all the sunroof, and all the uh, amenities that I had in the other one. But my brother, the police pulled him over for no reason, and he said, what did I do? 
And they literally was asking him, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Who are you here with? Who are you here to see? What are you doing in this community? What are you doing? Just for no reason, because of the color of his skin. And he just, he was like, I just came here to visit my sister. Let me see your ID. Let me see your uh, identification. My brother was in shock. And you know what he told me, what his response to was at the end of this? He said, Shauna, I don't think I can visit you anymore. He's, he was like, I've never been through anything like that. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be coming to visit you anymore after that. And that's, that's what they want. You know, I saw a special, this guy was not ashamed to say that he was a racist and that he does profiling. And he literally said that. He said, yes, I harassed the black people so much where they won't come back in the store. And so they'll get out of here because that's what they want. They don't want to send us running with their racism and things of this nature. But those of us who have, have been victimized and I have another friend, she's in, she's Native American. And she went through the same types of racism as me, not probably not to the extent that I have, but she knows what it's like. And I've had. Another friend who was Mexican, she was, no, she was Mexican or Puerto Rican. I think she was Puerto Rican, actually. And she went through the same types of racism, but not as, not to the extent of me. The racism, the racism that I went through being as a black woman was far worse. <laughs> the work, the thing that hurt me, well, it was many things that hurt me a lot. But one of the things that really hurt me is that when I was in college, I would be in the bathroom washing my hands and, or using a bathroom and other people would be in a bathroom. But as soon as this one race of people, and I will say this race of people, I'm sorry, but I will say this race of people because uh, people would assume that they're Caucasian, but this race is not even Caucasian. This was an Iranian race, foreigners, not even citizens of the United States because the school that I went to was international. So these Iranians, and uh, as soon as they would see me, in the bathroom, they would immediately run out for their life. I mean, they were scared to death just because of the color of my skin. And then they would wait outside the bathroom till I came out. Like even if they was using the bathroom, it didn't matter what they was doing. They would run out, wait on the outside of the door until I finished using the bathroom. And I never forget, I went to complain about it to the department because it was hurting me and it was horrible. It was ridiculous. I was like, you know, you maybe need to say something and because the way they treated me is like I'm not even human. And they totally ignored me, totally ignored me, didn't do nothing. They they looked at me like I was crazy and completely and totally ignored me. And as a person who has been victimized by racism, that is just as bad as the people who do the racism. They are just as bad. The only the way that I look at them is they're cowards. So you really hate me, too, because of the color of my skin. But you're just too cowardly to treat me racist. So you do it in your mind. And I have had racist people on my channel multiple times. <laughs> multiple times. As soon as I say something about Trump or some other leader that they don't like, they proceed to, oh my goodness, they attack me so racistly. And black people this and black people that. This is the kind of things that I've heard. And I delete their comments. You won't find them. You won't find this nonsense on my channel. I don't deal with people like that. I delete them. Uh, it's very rarely God will say, no, don't, don't block this person. I want you to minister to them. Very rarely. And I will say, okay, I'll minister to them. But I usually will block them quicker than they can blink an eye. They're out of here. And I, I even tell them, I will say to them, and this has happened multiple times, not just on my channel, but me commenting on other people's videos. I say, I talk about everybody. I talk about Trump, Obama. Hillary, I talk about them all. There's no, there's no racism here, but they don't care. They, they totally ignore my words. No, you for Obama. I'm like, I've made more videos about Obama than anybody. And no, this you're, you're racist. You're black. You're this. They, they proceed and tell me who I am based on their racist views. You know, I love all people. I'm not racist. And even these people that have done these things to me, it is hurtful and painful to see it now in, in, a, uh, in like a third generation. And my parents and all the people in my family have experienced racism as well. It's just a lot I'm not saying. 
and to see this happening over and over again. But I, I looked at this and I say, God cares. And I actually have to now teach my daughter these things. And, you know, you don't want to teach your children. It's the, you always hope as an African-American, you hope that your children will not endure the same things that you went through. You hope for a, be- a brighter day. You hope for a better day that they won't have to deal with it. But now that my daughter has dealt with it, I have to now tell her about racism, but I'm going to tell her the right way with the scriptures I just read. And with the videos that I've done, I've decided to let her see those videos, videos that she's never seen. Because I was hoping I would not have to discuss this with her. And all my life, I really like really dark skin. I love really dark skin. And if anything, I would have wanted to be transformed. And God knows that. God knows I'm telling the truth in really, really dark skin. Because I've always really loved that. I've always loved that. And I remember many times thinking about my children and how I ended up marrying light people. But I've always found very dark, dark skin, the most handsome skin to this day. That's just how I am.